Wands at the ready, we're talking wizard combat. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're diving back into Hogwarts Legacy, sharing tons of tips and tricks to perfect the art of dueling. You can't escape one simple truth about Hogwarts Legacy. At some point, you're gonna need to bust out your wand and deal some damage. That's just reality. Of course, your experience will vary wildly based on your difficulty, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna focus on perfecting the art of combat as if you were playing on the hardest difficulty in the game. Everything will still apply if you play on normal, easy, or story mode, but the goal here is to provide you with a broad base of knowledge when it comes to dealing with the enemies within the game, and with that in mind, Let's dive in. To get us ready for combat, we're gonna have to prepare accordingly. Now, we're gonna talk about combat techniques for dealing with all different types of enemies, and the single best thing I've discovered is that by having a spell sheet dedicated to dealing with a specific enemy type allows me to quickly adjust for whatever group of enemy I happen to encounter. This will all make sense a lot more as we dive into specifics, but for now, take a look at my various setups. I'm using all four spell sheets, something unlocked via the core talent tree, but you can always adjust things as needed. I like having everything at my fingertips so I don't have to stop and rework my spells, but really, it's up to you. These are the three setups I primarily use when dealing with dark wizards, goblins, and spiders. The fourth spell list is constantly in flux based on whatever content I'm currently doing, or if I want to work in a different spell that's not part of my standard rotation. I'd recommend taking a screenshot of this and referring to it as we work through the rest of the video. Let's kick things off with a doozy of a combination. If you attack an enemy with Glacius, they'll become frozen. If the next attack that hits the target is Defindo, they'll take an insane amount of damage. This is a very simple and straightforward combination that can be executed in next to no time. We take this combo to the next level if we add two spells into the mix. By using Accio, we can pull enemies close. Descendo will slam them into the ground for some chip damage, then weave in the same glacius Defindo combination we just talked about, and you've got a four spell rotation that packs a serious wallop. You can, of course, amplify this with talents for an even bigger impact, but we're gonna stay laser focused on the action itself. If you choose to use this combination, you should know that if you use Glacius on the final enemy in a group, you can simply walk up to them and use Petrificus Totalis for an instant kill. I wouldn't call this a game changer by any stretch, mainly because it's only applicable on the last target, but it's a fun nuance to the spell. You could actually take this idea one step further by using both Arresto Memento and Glacius, isolating the final two targets, and then using Petrificus Totalis to take both of them out of the picture. This is super cheeky in my opinion, and not at all helpful in a combat sense, but it's a nice skill to have in your back pocket. Say you're out of health potions and almost dead, this is a decent strategy for safely ending a fight. One final note about this technique, if you've unlocked the Imperious Curse, something we go into great detail about in our Ultimate Dark Arts Guide, you can use Imperio on a troll, and if they're the last target, can use Petrificus Totalis to instantly kill them. Because the game registers you as being out of combat, you can eliminate this massive foe with minimal effort. This will also work on any last enemy, just like the previous techniques. Let's also talk about one of my favorite spells in the game, Expelliarmus. Obviously, this is a fan favorite used frequently throughout the books and movies, but it's also a really potent spell in combination with the core talent, Ancient Magic Throw Expertise. This really comes into play when dealing with the Pensive Guardians in the main story trial missions and when dealing with goblins. Most of these enemies can be disarmed and then their weapons can be used against them as projectiles. Keep in mind, you can manipulate these projectiles and use them to attack a target that was not the original sender. This is a great way to break shields, disrupt enemy attacks, and do some solid chip damage. Ancient magic throw expertise comes in handy when dealing with bigger targets too, such as trolls. When kept at a distance, trolls will hurl a boulder at you, and if you simply block these with the tap of your shield, you'll notice you can then use ancient magic throw and hurl them right back at the target. This is my preferred strategy for dealing with trolls as the rock will stun them for a short period of time and also increase the damage that they take. While not in my standard rotation, I'd also be remiss if I didn't share a small tip about dealing with trolls in close range. When they do their melee attack sequence, they almost always end with a massive overhead chop. Once the club hits the ground, you can use Flipendo to levitate the club and boop the troll right on the nose for a chunk of damage. It's not a ton of damage, so I usually opt for another strategy. A final tip about Ancient Magic Throw, don't be afraid to hurl objects into enemies with shields. This is a great strategy on the hardest difficulty because thrown objects will always break shields regardless of colors. Obviously, easier difficulties have more flexibility here, but the same rules apply. Just be careful not to waste those explosive barrels on lesser enemies. Always reserve those for tougher enemies that require more damage to take out. 
Next up, let's talk about Wingardium Leviosa, which is, as you most likely know, a utility spell. First revealed by Boomstick Gaming on YouTube, the spell can actually be used in combat to hilarious effect. By using Wingardium Leviosa on an object and then smacking enemies around with the levitated item, you can deal significant damage. It's unclear if this is supposed to work like this, but as you can see, deadly effective. You can even weave in Depulso if you want to drop items on enemies for a little added impact. Before we move into more specific combat scenarios, I wanted to share one additional four spell combination I really enjoy using. This is primarily about maximizing damage potential in the shortest possible time. It starts off with Akio, which brings one, or if specced into Akio Mastery, multiple enemies in close. Follow that up with Incendio, which will act as an AoE attack if talented, then throw enemies back with Depulso, preferably chucking them into something for additional damage. If you didn't know, Depulso can be one of the best spells for dealing a ton of damage if you manage to throw enemies into environmental objects, and finally end with Confringo for the final bit of damage. This is a pure damage sequence that doesn't really take into account any sort of crowd control or battlefield manipulation. It's about dealing as much damage as fast as possible. You could also replace Confringo with Defindo if you prefer that damage dealing spell. What we just talked about is your foundation. Moving into this next section, we're going to focus on confronting specific enemies within Hogwarts Legacy. Remember those setups I showed you before? This is where they'll come into practice. You can read up on all of these different enemies in the Collections tab under the Enemies category, but we feel it's best to see everything in practice. First, let's talk about spiders and other nasty creatures. These are more or less straightforward, but there are a couple variations we can exploit for maximum damage. A general rule of thumb, spiders that burrow the scurriers can be instantly one-shot with a well-placed Levioso. The real challenge here is just managing to spot and target these spiders in the heat of combat, which can be a challenge as spiders never attack alone. Another thing to look out for are the shooters that sit at range and spit at you. If you catch them at the right moment as they're preparing to spit and hit them with a fire spell, they'll combust taking critical damage and often taking them out of the fight. This doesn't always kill them, so be mindful that you might need to hit them with a basic cast or two to finish them off. Finally, the Matriarchs. These are the bigger spiders that prefer to attack up close, and that's actually their biggest weakness. When you see a Matriarch rear backwards, you can use Descendo to throw them into the ground. Their mandible gets stuck, they take increased damage, and they're rendered useless for a solid few seconds. Take advantage of this whenever possible as these enemies have a very large health pool. If you don't have Descendo yet, or you just want a different approach, you can also use Incendio at any time on the Matriarchs and they'll flip onto their back for a few seconds, opening them up for an attack. Speaking of nasty creatures, a quick tip about Dug Box. These frog-like creatures also have a ton of health, but a simple trick can help you kill them in a blink of an eye. When fighting them, wait for their tongue attack. Instead of blocking it with Protego, cast Levioso. This will lift them into the air, exposing their underside. After that, cast Defindo and watch with wonder as you inflict a massive amount of damage, often one-shotting these pests. If you do want to have a good laugh before you actually kill a Dugbog, you can also use a Force spell, those are the purple ones, after they charge and they'll flip onto their backs, useless for a few seconds and taking increased damage. Next, let's talk about goblins. As a reminder, these are my four preferred spells I take into a fight with goblins. First, let's talk about the commanders. These are your basic melee goblins, just kicked up a notch. They come equipped with a purple shield as well as a secondary melee attack, and that's really the key. When fighting them, they'll deploy the standard goblin attack. Ignore this. What you're looking for is the unblockable second attack. As they rear back, cast Descendo, and it will slam them into the ground, dealing an insane amount of damage and often killing them. Goblins get a bit more tricky with the Assassin. They will use a teleport and slash combination to attack out of nowhere. You can use Arresto Memento to slow them down and it's a solid strategy, but I always choose to prioritize killing these enemies when dealing with goblins as they have the most erratic special attack. Sentinels, on the other hand, are a lot easier to deal with. They have a channeled magic attack that you can disrupt with Bombarda. This causes the spell to backfire, killing the Sentinel and dealing AoE damage to any enemies in the area. Finally, let's talk about the Ranger. These crossbow enemies sit in the back, casting bolts infused with ancient magic. Use ancient magic throw to redirect these back at the Ranger or to another target of your choosing. These will break enemy shields just like any other thrown object, so use that to your advantage. Finally, let's talk about Dark Wizards. I find most of these to be straightforward encounters, but there are a few things I want to call out. 
First up, the Executioner. These are the big bald guys that are resilient to a lot of attacks. Their biggest weakness is Expelliarmus. You can pretty much take them out of the fight by simply removing their wand from the equation right as they're casting their signature move. However, you can actually tap into something even better. By using Arresto Memento while they're conjuring that big attack, either a Lightning Storm or Fire Tornado, you can slow down the spell and use it in combination with the Pulso to throw enemies into the AoE. I'll admit this is a bit extra and requires a lot of setup and coordination, but when you pull it off, it's pretty satisfying. Another enemy worth mentioning is the Animagus. When they're in beast form, simply cast your Transfiguration spell to instantly turn them back into human form, stunning them for a considerable amount of time. You can only kill Animagus in their human form, so this essentially speeds up the time to kill and removes a powerful melee enemy from the board. The Dark Wizard Assassin is probably the most interesting of all the enemies you'll face in the game. Not only do they protect themselves with a purple shield, but they also have the ability to summon Inferi. As you no doubt know, these can only be damaged once they've been lit on fire. But did you know that a charging Inferi can be one shot with a well-timed Bombarda? As they're winding up for their unblockable hit, cast the spell and watch the Inferi burst into a million bits. This will also have some residual effect for added bonus. To ensure that all Inferi stay off the board, simply kill the assassin conjuring them. This is a great time for that first combo that I mentioned. Finally, it's worth noting that any enemy casting Reducto can be redirected with a well-timed Defindo, which will force the enemy to turn and cast at a friendly target. I find the timing of this to be a bit awkward, but I love having Defindo on the bars, so it's really a style choice. I also highly recommend you keep an eye on your dueling feats. The game has a way of gently reminding you what enemy weaknesses are. You just have to connect the dots to make it all happen. So there you have it. Some of the most important combat tips that we learned in our 100 plus hours with the game. If you have any questions or you want to share your favorite combat tip for the legacy gaming community, feel free to share in the comment section below. We're all about sharing knowledge here, so take a few seconds and give back to the community. I'd also recommend you check out your enemy collection cards. There are even more helpful tips you can pick up by skimming those for nuggets of information. You can find those in your field guide. If you guys appreciate videos like this that get straight to the point, save you time, and you want more content like this in your feeds, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Legacy Gaming has a ton more planned for Hogwarts Legacy, so stick around so you never miss a new video. I also want to invite you to join the Legacy Gaming community on Discord. We recently reworked our entire server, so if you're looking for a place to hang out, win free prizes, talk about great games like Hogwarts Legacy, and group up with friends, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.